Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Echo Arena VR League here, invitationally, in fact, as we get down to the bones of our series in a second. Why is that funny? I <laughs> Boys, <laughs> what R really, happened? Really important that you added the invitational bit at the end. Of course, yeah. they were invited anyway. These guys <laughs> are the best. I don't know. Like, it's just maths. I, no, it's not. Uh, but anyway, beyond that, of course, we're almost ready to get back into our Aftershock versus Omegators game here. As we have almost resolved those tech issues, and I think they have been resolved, we're just getting the players in a comfortable spot where we can actually go back into things. What are your predictions, actually, uh, out of curiosity? going into this series, who do you think is the one that is actually going to be able to move through the lower bracket? I would <laughs> say... Making your answer first. I would Just say that this score will be the series score. Ooh. Ooh, clairvoyance. Mm. I see. Well, what I'm saying is this score <laughs> yeah. is going to be the series score. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was I got, I don't the to biggest cop. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> what I, he already took my, like, my pick. You weren't going to do this, though. Who knows? You won't know anymore because you asked him first. That's true. We never know. I was no, I was never gonna do that. We need a, <laughs> I'm, I'm so we need a time machine to check that out. Yeah, I think it's gonna be zero two. Okay. Um, and I, I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's not even gonna be a close zero two. Ooh. I'm gonna be that guy. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Like, see, I don't want to be bold enough to like predict like the like a general scoreline. I. I feel like it'll be like relatively competitive at least though. Like I feel like the score lines maybe not like super close, but I feel like we're gonna be looking at teams within like one or two uh, within like one or two goals of each other. My question is what influences you, Jason? Is it because we saw Aftershock go really kinda toe to toe with eleven point five? Is that a factor that really kinda comes to play here when you make your prediction? It's just a feeling I get. Um Kind of like a shaking feeling, like the building might collapse, kind of thing feeling I get um, from it. No, I just feel like they're the better team. I don't know. Okay. I was looking over the past like results, like to see them kind of like always be neck and neck when it comes to the stage finals, mm -hmm. and always be able to push a lot of these teams and like push like your uh, pretty much every you know European team out there. I feel like they they have the opportunity to easily win this two zero. Okay. I was trying to make a stupid earthquake joke, and it just it didn't. Leave that out. to me. Leave that to me. You it felt a little flat. <laughs> you just laughed at your own joke, I, Blue. I, I don't <laughs> care. I found it funny. Blue, Blue I save us. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I. So, so the the thing for me is why I still feel like it's going to be two is the fact that Omega Tours, as we look at like the stage final brackets, things like that. Okay. This goes back to the fact that they have yet to really like prove themselves and take down a team that's like a tier above them. If we go back to the tier mm -hmm. argument that we were talking about before, they haven't really been able to push themselves forward and consistently be able to knock out those teams just yet. So I feel like even if even though we're on a land environment now, I feel like that's still going to become a problem for them is that they're just not going to have the experience necessary to take down some of these higher tier teams. On that note, though, uh, to be fair, in the video we saw of Aftershock, uh, they said they, or I think it was Matty who said he's never played against a North American team. That's he true, doesn't know yeah. what to expect. That's true. Well, we're about to get into it. Let's get into game number one here between Omegators and Aftershock. All right, and it's just going to reset the round really quickly, guys, and then we will be good for our teams to go out of the launch gates. Once again, just a quick reminder, this is a continuation from before. Aftershock did score the first goal that we were playing out, but then we had the tech issue pop up, so we paused it, and now we're jumping back into it. Still in the midst of the first round, of course, so both teams are still at 0-0 in the series. All right, so off the bat, Young, and for a quick pass, look how much she's far back Maddie's sitting. He's, like, literally at his goal. So they can't go for any sort of three-man pressure, which to me maybe maybe it's more akin to their style. I was kind of looking Might at maybe I was overthinking of like not trusting in their slingshot ability. Could skills. be could be just a safety thing for like the first uh, first jump or two as well because of the fact that uh, because of the fact that they're uh, they don't necessarily. I, I mean, we heard in the video there aftershock don't necessarily know what to expect out of any team, so maybe they're trying to like feel them out first before they get risky with these kinds of strategies. But look at this, the guys in Omega Tours are making a lot of great progress to get closer to the goal right now. In fact, great jukes, great pass work coming back around. The problem is their players. Getting knocked out in a nice block from Maddie in the goal there. Mainly picks it up and is going to send it out. It's not a full clear though. There's too many players on the direct path, so he doesn't have to send it off to the side. If they can steal this though, this would be looking good, Blue. Like they had the potential, they had a three on one break there, but luckily, unluckily for them, I think Young did get the uh, clear back into another player, at least the pass off to another player. He's going to try to make the push forward. Nice little juke to at least give him a few more seconds. Oh, pass off on a subtlety and a bounce as well. They had the goalie knocked out, but the actual throw was way off mark, so it sends itself flying out to the midfield once more, and now into the hands of Aftershock. We've already got a slingshot going with possession. There we go. There's a shot attempt, but it will be picked off by the Omega Taurus as now they take possession themselves and send it back to mid, too. Showing the importance of throwing as fast as you can. That's a clear shot. Is anyone going to be there in time? That's gonna no, miss. he dings it! Oh. Oh, we talked about the pressure. If he just waited maybe a little bit longer to get a little bit closer, that would have been three points for them. But that's unfortunate. Now coming back into the enemy side, that's going to be Omega Tours now trying to defend until Torobot comes in for an easy two. 
That's unfortunate. Quick speed on the slingshot there finally allows for Aftershock to secure themselves a second point. In this case, putting them up to four to nothing now against the Omega Taurus and sadly even them behind with not a whole lot of time left on that clock, almost about halfway through the round. We talked about Aftershock with their disc handling skill. Um, skills that we've seen. I, I crown them as probably being one of the best teams in terms of their passing. We saw there on the breakaway a great like forward pass. I don't, I can't, I don't remember who was off of off the top of my head, um, but he threw it over to the two players who were slingshotting, but he led it enough that they can continue that speed to make sure to grab it in time to not lose any time and, and look for that free shot. But fortunately, the three-point didn't work out. So now you can see our vote results popping up there as well. This one's obviously a little bit closer with Aftershock being the favorite, but not by much. Once again, you can vote online and we show those poll links before the games. But we've got Omega Taurus trying to go for another shot here. Again, they've got the lineups, they've got the password going on. Tillable Bag kind of standing in the open there for a second. But he's going to move in now, try to take the duel versus Matt. He gets himself close and immediately everyone from Aftershock piles on, but it's not enough to stop it. Omega Taurus secure the goal anyway and finally get their first point on the board. I really want to see teams who are defending that position maybe be a little bit more aggressive, go for those punches. They actually give each other a lot of room. You see a punch there, that was on Tutorial Bot out of uh, Subtlety, which does clear him another angle. But then you see like both defenders of Aftershock, besides the goalie, look towards the disc. You know, not kind of like split their attention to see where they could potentially pass off to. And then that, I guess, in the end, uh, netted them, you know, their first score of the game. So we're going to watch out here in a second Aftershock. We'll be starting out with possession once again. There's the fork. It's looking like Omega Tours are going to send their, most of their players. Actually, they'll just hold them back because I don't think they're too confident in the player they launch for being able to successfully intercept it. Oh, a nice punch is going to allow the Omega Tours to now take it away, though, just as Aftershock were getting into their opponent's territory. But a quick slingshot back is still going to leave them in a very secure position for the time being. It's still going to be hard to fully get out of this Ooh. one. You can see the push coming back in. And a syllable bag trying to go for a potential pu uh, punch or steal away, but now here comes a slingshot yet again. Look how far ahead after Shocked are. They might be able to pick up another two points, but no! Syllable bag gets the punch, gets the steal away, throws it ahead towards Young. Now they have a potential breakaway. You can see the slingshot trying to come in back in for Aftershock to get there in time, but they have messed it up. There was no regrab coming through. So much for subtlety. Tries to go for the shot, but gets blocked out on it again. Aftershock go for the clear another time. Clear once more, sending it very, very close oh. to Omega Taurus' goal here. And this is not going to be good because they have no one back there, so it's just an open field. And in fact, this time they're able to even secure a three-pointer if they back up a little bit there, line up the shot, so get in to put them up 7-2 to two now. Just thinking about, you know, my prediction. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Not a very close match, yeah. potentially, for Aftershock. Oh, well, we, we got time. We got time. 7-2. Omega you know. Taurus could score again. I'm yeah. calling it now. It's going to be 11-2, uh, to two, end of the first round. Actually, that's really, like... That's very, very generous. I'm, I'm sticking to it. Yeah, 11 to 2. Yeah, I Hold know. on, where'd you get that? We got a three pointer and a two pointer. Yeah. Right, wait, okay. two pointer and a two pointer. So basically, they're going to score one more time. Two pointer. Two, 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 two pointers. Two. Oh, oh, you might be right about this, actually. That was a great interception from Aftershock. Bit of a wild pass, though. I think Slim was supposed to catch that one, but still retrieves and gets a nice block off. Scoring here is going to be a little bit difficult, so tries to pass it back. It's another missed pass, however. Maddie tries to go back for it and is still going to have to be the one to retrieve it, as other teammates nowhere nearby yet, just yet. Oh, oh. oh, that's off the island there. Off towards the nest. Again, a good clear coming through. Turbot looking for a passer. Slin's going to be able to pick it up and continue the clear. No, it actually hits the side of the wall, unfortunately. Bounces in favor of, of uh, Omega Gators. Omega Gators? <laughs> Omega, Omega Gators, Gators would be even better. That's like Sharp NATO, but like times seven. Oh, that's a great defense out of Maddie. And he's going to be able to get a great clear as well through one of the side tunnels. Sends it flying. Aftershock do have great positioning, but once again, the disc is fumbled. It's sent flying into the open. And I think now it's going to be the Omega Taurus once again that pick it up. Let's see. Can they really accomplish much off this? They're still down by five. So they're going to need to make two three-pointers in a row to take the lead. Or three and a two just to tie things up. 30 seconds left to go for the clear yet again. The punch comes in, but it's going to be a little bit delayed. You can see Maddie holding two targets off. In the meantime, push coming back in. It's turbo if you get the forward pass to slip. No! Slip back comes in with the steal. But again, the time, it's running out, Blue. Yeah, there's been so many sloppy passes, it seems like, so far in this volley. So it's just wasted so much time because of that. Because guys have to go to complete stops and change their direction of movement all of a sudden. Here we go. We got another attempt coming in from the Omega towards their last chance, really, to make some impact here. Pass over to Sealable Bag. He's going to try to swing it in, but it doesn't work out. Maddie intercepts and sends it back the other direction and that should secure it. In fact, it does. Aftershock will take round number one with a final score of 7-2. to two. All right, so four points for Totoro Bot Slin with three. Son of a... Oma Gators. I'm just keep calling them Oma Gators. I like the name. A lot more stuns as well from Aftershock that you could see yeah. there. They had two players in the high double digits or the high tens at least, whereas I don't think anyone from the Oma Gators managed to get over 10 stuns in that game. There was a couple of, of plays you saw it of... Uh, Omegators, where they just kind of messed up their regrabs, like getting back defensively. Um, 
And that's kind of a shame. I mean, I know every team here is capable of doing that. Maybe it's just the nerves getting to them. Maybe it's just the environment that they're not used to. You know, maybe it's just kind of like being on a LAN, you know, for one of the first times can really kind of mentally stump you sometimes when you're trying to go for those plays that you know how to do. But they're going to have to be able to fix things up here because that was not a great showing out of them. And they're now one round away, Blue, from potentially being knocked out of the entire Invitational. That's very true. Dreams can come to an end quickly here, sadly, due to the quick nature of the game. So They had good steals. Sorry, I don't want to give some positive, you know. I mean, they, they had really good steals. Like, they, they were able to, like, steal it away multiple times and able to go for some great grabs. I want to give them that at least because they were playing well there. Let's see if they're going to be able to make up for it now as we get into the second round. Omega Tours will start off with possession. It's not necessarily secure, though. We can see it's Young really trying to move away from Slin, who immediately went onto the offensive there. In fact, he's going to be the one to retrieve it after it's set loose. Bouncing off the island. Tutorial bot picks it up, and a quick follow-up into an immediate goal attempt right there. And they sink it nicely done by Aftershock. And specifically, Tutorial bot capitalizes on a great opportunity. And just like that, they've already got a good lead. Yeah, they do. Good start for Aftershock here. Again, Slin, great pass. Uh, again, we talked about, like, the... The disc handling skills out of this team, and I still want to say it's like unrivaled. Just again, placing exactly where it needs to be, reading to the teammates. The communication has to go with it as well to know, like, is your player, your teammate, going to continue to push you, or is he going to stop and wait for the disc? Meantime, Omegator is going to have possession now. And they need to make something happen here. They really need to start getting a goal just for like the, the morale of the team, I think. Sobble has got possession for now. We'll pass over towards Young. And they've got a bit of a triangle going now to pass back and forth between each other. So far, it hasn't been interrupted that much by Aftershock as well. No missed passes either, so they're getting a lot of forward momentum going right now. They'll get themselves a chance at a 2v1 against the goalie. The goalie moves out, but it's not enough as Young sneaks around the backside, sinks it in anyway. It's a two-pointer, though, so for now, Aftershock still are in control. Nice, good job right there. Uh, they actually were able to like make Aftershock get too aggressive. You can see on the minimap, like two players pushed too far away um, to help defend this, and they weren't even in position to really slingshot in quick enough. And a great ball handling skills again out of Young or disc handling skills to come in from the backhand side like that. They came in just a little bit too late and taking advantage of uh, Aftershock being out of position. Well done. So again, teams will launch in just a moment here with Aftershock. Now getting themselves a little bit of possession to work off of. See how the opening play goes off as Matty once again picks up the QB position for now. Quick pass over to Tutorial Bot. Slin is open for a pass. It's Ali. Oh, oh, he just tries to go right forward. Actually, that's a bit bold, so that's not going to work out at all. Megators will steal it back because of that. I right, see Levi trying to get a pass up. Get a little bit too high there, unfortunately, but I think they have enough players here to, to still pick it up either way. Again, Clear comes in. That wasn't even like. That wasn't even like a set pass they wanted to go for. It's just like, oh man, we need to clear this as far and as deep as we can. Now to shock with all three players, able to get the disc, but they're actually getting punched up. So the regrabs aren't really going to be able to be there to get across the field quick enough. And yet the disc is still in the hands of Aftershock. Still going blue. They keep managing to uh, bounce it back and they try to clear it through the tunnel every time on Megatours that is trying to clear it through the tunnel. So Aftershock is finally going to be able to make it through over to the other side. Everybody from the Omega Tours is back on defense. That's going to matter. The pass gets off to Tutorial Bot. He's basically got himself the 1v1 ready to go. And once again, will secure additional points for the Aftershock roster as they take the lead even more so 5-2. to two. We've seen so many people over the course of today, <clears throat> when they go for these close proximity goals, they go over the head. Like, watch this. Tutorial Bot, again, is going to come in above the head. Uh, the defender there, and I, I don't know sure exactly why that works so often anymore because it's not the first team to ha to do that. We saw with Eclipse. Actually, no, no, it wasn't Eclipse. It was Metamerks. Uh, no, no, sorry, it was 11.5. Wow, I'm not smart. <laughs> Third time every term. team, every team. Uh, no, it was Dash. Like he kept getting the the scores over his head multiple times uh, when they're playing against Blast. It used to be the go-to location. We'll make it towards. Themselves good possession to start off for on this round. They're gonna bounce it around a little bit, mainly as you can see, they're trying to avoid tutorial bot. Already got himself forward and is trying to get in the way of their triangle. Oof, Slin sneaks away, manages to latch onto the back of one of the members of the Omega Tours, now takes it away. He's alone here, though. So just has to go for a quick clear, tries to make an attempt. That almost works. In fact, it might still work. And there you go. Maddie coming in off a slingshot, supported by his teammate there, bounces it off the backboard and right inside. 7-2 again here for Aftershock, but with a lot more time on the board than previously. Yeah, they're just playing well. They're playing really good. You can see, again, the slingshot's working out well for them. They, they have, like, seem to be pinpoint accuracy to finding these discs whenever they do, like, bounce around. They know exactly, like, the location it's going to be at so they can be there in time. I would really curious to see the possession, though, uh, between the two teams over the course of this round. I want to say it favors... I want to say it favors uh, Omegators here. Because Aftershock, when they score, they seem to score really fast. Let's see how that develops. 
See a little bags got control now. Look at how much pressure Aftershock are putting on now, just off of the initial launch here. They're sending two players over, which is going to leave players like Maddie a little bit exposed, but as well, there's not enough interference going on to their slingshot. Oh, so guys like again. Slyn are getting over here very quickly. And yeah, as you just mentioned there, the punch is going to allow for once more Aftershock to take control. Their clear isn't the greatest, though, so they can't go full speed on the slingshot as they still have to work for control at the midfield. But they're keeping Omega is clumped up, so they can't actually spread out. They can't actually spread away from each other to make sure to get these passes off. The slingshot's going to come in yet again. You can see Tutorial Bot's already off in the running. He's going to have some sort of opponents off towards the side, but can't get the shot off. No, he gets punched up in time. The disc goes into the ceiling, and it looks like Omega will be able to pick this one up and hopefully for them still be able to clear it. Back up to their goalie to make sure it's a little bit of an easier clear and a less pressured clear. But at the same time, oh, we're see here actually, because they managed to get right next to the goal. They're going to gloat about it there for a few seconds as they delay the goal itself. But Sealable Bag will be the one to control it. That score a second goal now for the Omega Tours. Yeah, it looked like maybe Slim was having some issues there. Um, but either way, that was a good job by Omega Tours to get back towards the enemy side of the field and get those another two points on the board. Again, like the pressure of both these two teams is if you lose this, you're going home. And for some players, that's farther than the others. <laughs> Raptor Shock is probably right around the corner for Omegators. That's back to the U.S. Journey that would be indeed. So they don't want to, they don't want to take it this early on if they can avoid it. But it will become inevitable. Just under two minutes here if they're not able to reverse it. This is a great time-wasting strat right here. Now he's playing around. He's got to be careful, though, because he will eventually catch up to him. It is sent loose. Right now, it's a bit of a skirmish between both the teams that we can see. Attempts to knock each other out going back and forth, but eventually a clear is found by Aftershock to send it over into Omegator's territory. Won't remain under Aftershock's control, however, as Omegator's immediately pick it back up and send it over to the midfield. I do, but it's still really scruffy between the two teams. A nice three-point here. You can see how far back that Maddie is sitting, something reminiscent of what we saw in the first round. Playing super defensive, not wanting to push up. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one here. It's going to come down to who can be better than the other. And the push is going to come in. The play as well. I don't know if you guys can hear the crowd, but I can definitely hear it through my own so that, was, that was actually really cool with Sealable Bag there, there as well, because we don't see the adjustment on the tilt happen so much, but he actually turns himself sideways a little bit so that he can make a clicker shot to the right side and kind of throw off Matty a little bit. And you can see it. It works out great. Nicely done. There we go. We're getting, we're, getting a, we're getting a match here. We're getting a close game. Six to seven. I can put my smiling back away now, <laughs> as it was seven to earlier on. Um, looking really good. Roma is starting to get ice, you know, shake off the rust, I guess we can say. But there's still a minute and ten remain. They're still down one point. This isn't tied up just yet. But they're going to have their opportunity here. They definitely have the time to work with. And they also have the possession, most importantly. But can they keep this clean? That's quick pass coming back over here to so much for Subtle now. Problem is, it's still inside of their three points. And they got to get rid of it here. It's going to get passed over towards Sealable Bag. Then to Young. Trying to go back and forth between those two right now. We oh, might have a what? pass back. No, it goes right to the hands of Tutorial Bot oh somehow. My gosh. Don't he's tell got me an open door. This. There we go. The wide swing, and they cannot beat it. So, Aftershock steal a three-pointer out of absolutely nowhere. And Omega Tours only have 45 seconds to respond to that now. He intercepts it right here, and he gets two punches. One onto Young, and one onto Subtlety right after. So, he can continue to push through. How does no one punch this man? He gets through in a situation he should never have won 1v3 and gets points on the board. Young does get the punch. It's just a little bit too late, sadly, as the pass is already off at that point and the goal attempt made. So Aftershock looking dodgy for a second. They're looking like they were going to maybe lose control of this one, but now they've got it once again. And it's Omega Tours who must score at least two goals, regardless of if they're three or two pointers, be able to either tie or take the lead before the timer runs out. Look at Silva Bag trying to play sneaky off towards the side towards the uh, bottom edge of the mini-map. Young going to be able to pick up the disc, but does get punched up again. Goes to the clear. Sling comes in, looks at his own clear, and that's not going to work out for him. The time is ticking away. 27 seconds left to go, and if they're going to score now, they have to do it. They have to make something happen in these next 5 to 10 seconds if they want to have a chance, but the clear is going to be there. Great little pickup by Slin to get the pass, or the interception, and to clear it away. And Blue, this is looking good for Aftershock. Yeah, Young's got control once again here to stop the Aftershock roster from scoring once more against the Omega Tours. That's not going to matter much. Less than 10 seconds remaining, and Aftershock just picked up control. They're just going to waste time here as we go below five seconds. And with a 10 to 6 scoreline, Aftershock will take control of this series 2 to nothing by claiming the second round in dominant fashion. They're moving on, and sadly, our NA team here will be one of our first to be eliminated. Yeah, unfortunate for them to have to go home so soon. But hey, they got some experience. Keep in mind, Oculus Connect is right around the corner at the end of September. And I believe they're already qualified through to participate in the World Qualifiers, which is at some time in September as well. So, you know, some good experience for them. There's 30,000 on the line for first place at Oculus Connect. So that's something that definitely have their eyes focused on. Yeah. But hey, I mean, they didn't play, they didn't play bad at all. 
Um, but I think they can go home with some tape to look at and to look at what to improve. That's right. It might be zero grav, but Aftershock is able to make the ground rumble underneath their opponents and move on in the lower bracket. Good stuff coming out from them. And overall, I mean, a really good showing. I feel like the tutorial bot, the big play, the intercept, the double stun into yeah. the long shot at range accuracy that he had. And then one second after that, he gets stunned out. So it was the perfect time to be able to throw that throw that three-pointer towards the end. Really great stuff. Even better, it's a, it's like a great momentum breaker too, because prior to that, their opponents on the Omega Tours were, were about to run the comeback. Yeah, They're only yeah. one goal away from maybe even taking the lead away, but all of a sudden that just completely flips the story on its head. And with that, it's all but secured there. So yeah. really close games, you know, between the two either way. I mean, the, the first round was 7-2, and then it was 10-6. Not that big of a score discrepancy between the two teams, but I think possession really kind of gave you a nice indicator of, like, what was happening. Because mm. Aftershock, like, weren't winning possession time, but they were winning the game, which meant when they scored, they scored quickly. It yeah. just meant their defense was really good as well. Well, let's head down to the stage now as we can hear from the man that made the big plays, Tutorial Bot with Punanas. Thank you, James. I'm here with Tutorial Bot, a uh, very mythical legend in the game himself. Very funny man as well. Uh, looks good on camera too, I think, right? <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> we'll have to see. Well, they're talking about your great interception, about your team working together to take out the Omega Gators, as they're also known, formerly King Gorillas, and uh, I think they ever been crocodile, Crocodillos at one point. But you guys getting together with uh, Slynn and with Maddie, Maddie pulling out the nerves now and actually bringing the pain and not getting eliminated. Uh, tell me about what y'all were going into this game thinking about how you were going to defeat the North American style. Uh, we know that they tend to pass a lot more frequently, better, to be honest, than most of the Europeans. We tend to be more about clearing and boosting and fast, and so we've been trying to work on a hybrid game, because I don't think one is necessarily perfect over the other. If you can master both, that's kind of it. Uh, we're just trying that, basically. 100% on adaptability. They say that is Blast's uh, key to getting to winning this thing, even though it didn't work out for them. But, uh, see, the Europeans can be adaptable, so... I want to know, what do you think you're going to be able to do? Do you think you'll be able to fight your way through the rest of the lower bracket? Uh, in both the Stage 1 and Stage 2 uh, tournaments, we actually went into the lower bracket and had to claw our way out. It's something that we're becoming like known for, I guess. So I hope so, uh, but we'll see. Being the underdog is where they live, and they are in a collision course with Blast. Longtime rivals and guys that I know they're going to give you a lot of trouble. What is your message for Blast? We're coming for you, man. <laughs> That's the tutorial bot we all know and love. Back to you, James. Thank you very much. And actually, you know, one thing to take away from all of that is that every single time we go over to, to hear from our players or our interviews, you can see they're physically kind of almost exhausted just a little bit. It's a lot of energy that's really going into this and a lot of energy, not only physically, that is going into it, but also kind of mentally people wanting to progress through this bracket. I mean, Simeon in the last game looked like he just finished running like a half marathon. Yeah. So. <laughs> No, I, yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, as the day goes on, especially for teams who kind of need to, like, wait for their later matches, you know, being tired is something that's really going to affect you. You know, we see, you know, in, again, like, quote, unquote, traditional youth sports with mouse and keyboard, when you play one match, you have to wait a couple hours for your next match, you get really run down, you get really tired. But then adding in the fact that you're jumping around and swinging your arms around makes you even more tired kind of thing. And I bet, you know, teams just want to play games back to back to back. But this is a whole nother, like, strategy and a whole yeah. nother, like, thing you have to learn about playing on lands is that delay you do have and to kind of stay focused throughout this time. And for this tournament, unfortunately, for Omega Gators, they're not going to be the Alpha and the Omega here moving forward. But do you reckon that we're going to be able to see more of them in the future and uh, being able to bring back more promising results? Absolutely. They're still one of the top tier teams in North America, mm. and we're definitely going to see them play. It's more of the stage finals than I imagine, since they've already qualified for it. Uh, we're going to yep. see them play pretty well at the regionals, too, when those come around uh, in a month or two from now. Again, just gives them some experience here, you know, being on land and, and playing against European teams. Mm. and played in general like in front of an audience because a lot of their peers are sitting here watching as well you know judging their every move and you have to kind of transcend that and move mentally beyond that again that that amazing play that tutorial bot right there the, the double punch the interception that the double punch and then the three point like that was just the final nail in the coffin yeah so far for me aside from wit's interception during that game i think that from tutorial yeah. bot for me yeah. so far yeah. has been the play of the day uh always great to see how that is going to play out but overall our next match is going to be boost going up against Gravity. We'll get plenty of time to talk about that in a moment. For now, we're going to go to a short break here for the VR League for Echo Arena. And when we return, we've got more action from the lower bracket. Stay tuned. <laughs> 